Uh, but it's time for our Sky Debate now. This morning joining me in the studio, we have Dr Adam Elliott Cooper from King's College London and Peter Kirkham, former senior investigating police officer at the Metropolitan Police. And we are debating whether criminal record disclosure rules need to be relaxed for young offenders. Good morning to you both. Good morning. I have to start out by saying we have had a lot of viewer reaction to this because the idea is, I'll start with you, um, Adam, if I may, that crimes committed by youngsters, we're talking around the ages of 11 to 12, the idea that they should be wiped when they're adults because people are saying in their 20s they are struggling to get jobs as a, rea uh, as a consequence of foolish behaviour when they were younger. Um, I think you're completely right. Um, I think that if we're really interested in re reducing reoffending in this country, which I think that as a society we should be, then we should be encouraging and helping young people to not be discriminated against in the workplace, in housing, um, in education, and all of the necessities that they need to rebuild their lives um, after often coming from uh, an environment that involves deprivation or neglect or um, uh, other social issues that can lead to people being involved in crime and making mistakes when they're younger. Mm. Um, Peter, quite a mixed reaction. We did have a tweet in earlier from... Uh, Kevin, who said, where do you draw a line? Because obviously all sorts of different ages, uh, you are classed as a young offender, anything from 11 through to 18, and all sorts of different categories of crime as well. It's very hard to have a one rule for one and one rule for the other. It, it is. Um, broadly speaking, most things that young people un under the age of 18, are, that would be my sort of categorisation, uh, young people get involved in, um, yeah, they move on from. And, and at some point... Uh, they become utterly irrelevant in terms of uh, their future going forward. Um, but that said, there are some really serious offenders below the age of uh, 18. Mm -hmm. I mean, just this last couple of weeks, we saw the um, moped robbers committed 100 knife point uh, and snatch type mobile phone robberies. Well, I'm not sure um, that they're you know, 15, 16, 17. I'm not sure that that should be forgotten. Mm. Uh, otherwise, by the time they're 23, 24 and come out of prison from their four or five year sentences, um, they'll be applying for jobs as security guards or whatever. Now, that would be insane, I would suggest. Uh, likewise, there are serious sexual offences uh, and people would um, then be getting jobs with vulnerable victims around them in, in care homes or in youth settings or whatever, and suddenly there'll be a problem. So we, we need to think carefully about this. And I don't think it's the police that should be um, making the decision. They have the information, but they shouldn't be making the decision. Government should and employers should. Adam, I've had a tweet in from Scott Hamilton. He's, he says, no, records should remain. A decent employer should see past minor offences in the future uh, if open and show development. He's saying if the, the employee shows uh, openness and development. If not, it's a poor employer. So um, do you think it's up to the employer to make those decisions? Because the, the fear is that a lot of employers will look down CVs, they might have a pile like that, look down, see criminal record and go, no. Um, I think that if we rely upon um, employers um, to help make our society a better place by giving an opportunity to people who made, may have made mistakes when they were younger, then I think we're going to be waiting a very, very long time. Um, I think it's um, uh, incumbent upon the government um, to ensure that the people um, who have been criminalised um, in the past as young people get the opportunities they need to go straight, to be able to get the employment, the housing, the education, the other things that we all require in order to live a, 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 a proper existence. Mm. Isn't it a sad fact, though, of, of life, Peter, however open an employer is, if they have two very good candidates of equal stature in terms of ability to do the job. If they have one with a criminal record and one without, they will probably, well, they will almost certainly go for the one without the criminal record. They need to make a decision about what that information is and whether it's of relevance to the job. If it isn't of relevance to the job, it should be put to one side entirely. Uh, it's a difficult thing to do, but it's the employer that's got the best position, best understanding of the position and context that person's going to be working in and whether or not it's relevant. We can't ask the police to be doing that. Um, we need to understand what we're doing here. And what we're doing here is we're providing employers, and, and the, whole, the whole aim of the exercise was to protect vulnerable victims. It started with children uh, and it's expanded from that. And it, and it applies to adults with convictions as well as uh, young people. Um, we need to make it plain what we're doing is providing information where it's considered relevant. Like I so say, the police shouldn't be making that decision. It should be being made by the government with a clear framework. And then the employers need to be using that sensibly. The way we present it on the um, DBS check um, 
certificate, we maybe need to think about that. We maybe need to think about putting covering letters and information to employers. Maybe some sort of appeal process or some sort of oversight process mm. uh, that people, if they think they can go to an employment tick, tribunal. Says, or whatever. Do you have a, a For sure. record? <clears throat> um, Adam, it would only take one person to do wrong, have an employer having, you know, given them the faith or, you know, them not declaring that record. If they reoffend or if something goes wrong, then this all falls into disrepute, doesn't it? That's the danger. Um, I think that we can't um, uh, apply the logic of one or two individuals who may make multiple mistakes mm. to every single person who has com who's been found guilty of a crime um, as a child or as a minor. I think it's really important that as a society and as a government, we take each case on their merits. And I think even if we think selfishly, if we want to reduce reoffending in this country, and we have a pretty high reoffending rate in this country um, uh, in relation to the rest of Europe, if we want to re re reduce reoffending in this country, providing employment, access to decent housing, access to decent education, which is what the government is saying young people are being, and um, young adults are being um, uh, alienated from because of these um, checks, then we need to allow access. If you're a victim of that crime that was carried out, at whatever age you were, though, you may have a different point of view. I put out a tweet earlier on saying, um, you know, about young people, if they had been given a criminal record for something like vandalism. And I immediately got a tweet back from somebody who had been a victim of vandalism and said, to them, that is not a lesser crime. That caused all sorts of complications for them. And it was horrific. So it's very difficult to grade crimes. Of course. But um, fortunately, we live in a, in a democracy, right? If somebody like killed someone very close to me, mm. I wouldn't want to be the person in charge deciding how that person is convicted because I would have a very biased view. That's why we have a court. That's why we have a justice system. And I think that it should go through those kind of due processes rather than um, uh, thinking about uh, how, a, how a victim might react um, to a specific case. Um, Peter, we're running out of time, but just a final word from you in terms of at present is it is a one rule for all you have to declare that you have a criminal record it would be quite interesting to change that system as you said about getting more information so it's more tailor-made so it doesn't ruin the lives of those who are completely different people at the age of 22 to what they were when they were 11. There's certainly <clears throat> certainly scope to make a lot of changes to the system and to remove most of the problems for most cases what offences um, drop off the radar entirely uh, do we have, well, they're there until you're 25 or something, and then they drop off unless something's kept them going. So there's lots of ways we could remove most of the issues from most people, and where there are serious cases, uh, then some proper attention could be focused on that and some sensible decisions made. But like I say, it shouldn't be the police making this decision. Uh, yet again, it's responsibility being pushed onto the police, uh, who are sued on the one hand by people who they've disclosed stuff about and sued on the other hand by people who they didn't disclose stuff about. OK, Peter Kirkham, Dr Adam Elliott Cooper, that's all we've got time for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.